Hello, everyone, and welcome to Financial Accounting. Today, we continue with the topic, the accounting cycle, reporting financial results. We will look at the demonstration problem and learn how to use the worksheet to prepare the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, closing entries, and after closing trial balance. I have two good videos on preparing closing entries and reporting financial results. I'm posting the links right here and in the description to this video. Now let's look at the demonstration problem. Jen's Dance Studio performs adjusting entries every month, but closes its accounts only at year end. The studio's year end adjusted trial balance dated December 31st appears as follows. Keep in mind that the balance shown for retained earnings was last updated on December 31st of the previous year. We will need to do the following. Prepare an income statement and statement of retained earnings for the year. Also prepare the studio's balance sheet dated December 31st. Prepare the necessary closing entries at December 31st. Prepare an after closing trial balance dated December 31st. To solve this problem, we are going to use the worksheet. A worksheet shows the relationship between the unadjusted trial balance, proposed adjusting entries, and financial statements. It is prepared at the end of the period before the adjusted entries are recorded in accounting records. Please remember that the worksheet is not a formal step in the accounting cycle and is not required. Instead, it is a tool used by accountants for convenience as it makes it easier to work out the details of the proposed end of period adjustments. It is a beneficial tool as it provides accountants with a preview of how the financial statements will look. We can use a worksheet for several purposes. It can help us determine the effects of adjusting entries without entering these adjustments in the accounting records. A worksheet makes it easier to spot and correct errors or make changes in estimated amounts. We can also review the financial statements before issuing the final drafts. Once the worksheet is completed, we can use it as a source for adjusting and closing entries and for preparing financial statements. Another important use of the worksheet is in the preparation of interim financial statements. Interim financial statements are financial statements developed at various points during the fiscal year. Most companies close their accounts only once each year. However, we may need to issue quarterly or monthly financial statements. We can develop these interim statements without having to formally adjust and close their accounts through the use of a worksheet. The preparation of the worksheet can be done manually or with the help of an Excel spreadsheet and involves five basic steps. We will add two more steps to also use it for closing entries. We begin by describing these steps as if the worksheet were being prepared manually. The steps are enter the ledger account balances in the trial balance columns, enter the adjustments in the adjustments columns, prepare an adjusted trial balance. Extend the adjusted trial balance amounts into the appropriate financial statement columns. Total the financial statement columns, determine and record net income or net loss. Enter the closing entries in the closing entries columns. Prepare the after closing trial balance. This is the adjusted trial balance for Jen's Dance Studio. Note that in this exercise, we don't need to complete the first three steps because we are provided with the adjusted trial balance. The first slide is the balance sheet accounts. Note 
that all assets except accumulated depreciation and dividends are listed in the debit column because assets and dividends have a normal debit balance. The accumulated depreciation, which is a contra asset account, all liabilities, common stock and retained earnings are listed in the credit column because they have a normal credit balance. The next slide lists all income statement accounts. Note that revenue is listed in the credit column as it has a normal credit balance. All expenses are listed in the debit column as expenses have a normal debit balance. Note that total debits must equal total credits. Now let's look at the worksheet. I use an Excel spreadsheet and have already entered all accounts and balances in the adjusted trial balance columns and set up columns for the income statement, the balance sheet, closing entries, and the after closing trial balance. Let's move on to step four and extend the adjusted trial balance amounts into the appropriate financial statement columns. The balance sheet accounts, assets, liabilities, and owner's equity are extended into the balance sheet columns. Income statement amounts into the income statement columns. Notice each amount is extended to only one column. Note that each account retains the same debit or credit balance as shown in the adjusted trial balance. I'm using Excel formulas to make it easier to copy and to ensure there are no mistakes. Using the formulas is also very helpful in case you need to make any changes in the adjusted trial balance. If the formulas are used, you don't need to update balances in other columns. Excel updates them automatically. The next step in preparing the worksheet consists of totaling the income statement and balance sheet columns and then bringing each set of columns into balance. This is done on the bottom three lines of the worksheet. When the income statement and balance sheet columns are first totaled, their respective debit and credit columns will not be equal. Each set of columns should be out of balance by the same amount. And that amount should be the amount of net income on net loss for the period. In our case, the difference is $36,000. Let's briefly explain why both sets of columns initially are out of balance by this amount. First, let's look at the income statement columns. The credit column holds the revenue accounts and the debit column, the expense accounts. Therefore, the difference represents the net income or net loss for the year. Since the difference on our worksheet is in the debit column, it means that total credits, which is revenue, exceed total debits, which is expenses. As a result, we have a net income. Now let's look at the balance sheet columns. All of the balance sheet amounts are shown at up-to-date amounts, except for the retained earnings account, which still contains the balance from the beginning of the year. To bring the retained earnings account up-to-date, we must add net income and subtract any dividends. The dividends already appear in the balance sheet debit column. So the only thing missing is the net income. To bring both sets of columns into balance, we enter the net income of 36,000 on the next line. The same amount will appear in both the income statement columns and the balance sheet columns. But in one set of columns, it appears as a debit and in the other, it appears as a credit. After 36,000 is entered, each set of columns should balance. At this point, we can prepare the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. Note that revenue and expenses 
are the same as on the worksheet that we prepared. The net income is 36,000. When preparing financial statements, don't forget to have a three line header that includes the company's name, the name of the statement and the period of time. The next slide shows the statement of retained earnings. We start with the beginning balance of 40,000, then add the net income of 36,000 and subtract dividends of 6,000 to arrive at the ending retained earnings balance of 70,000. The next slide is the balance sheet. It also matches with the balance sheet section of the worksheet. Note that the retained earnings balance is 70,000, which is the same as the ending retained earnings balance on the statement of retained earnings. Note that balance sheet is issued as of December 31st, not for the year ending December 31st. The balance sheet represents the company's financial position and accumulates balances from the company's inception. The closing of a company's books is a four-step process. Step one is to close all revenue accounts to a temporary account called income summary. Step two is to close all expense accounts to the income summary account. At this point, net income is isolated in the income summary. Step three is to close income summary to retained earnings. Net income transfers from income summary to retained earnings and zeros out income summary. The income summary account never appears in the financial statements. The fourth and final step is to close dividends to retained earnings. Net income is added to retained earnings and dividend is subtracted from retained earnings. This updates retained earnings. The goal is to close all temporary accounts so we can start keeping track of revenue and expenses for the new accounting period. Let's look at the T accounts for revenue and expenses. In terms of T accounts, all expenses are on the left or debit side of the expenses T accounts and sales revenue is on the right or credit side of revenue T account. Revenue has a credit balance, so to close the account, it must be debited for its current balance and credited to income summary. The closing entry for revenues is to debit the revenue account, sales revenue, for its balance of 165,000 and credit income summary for the same amount. Notice that the balance in the revenue account is zero. We can now start accumulating revenue for the next accounting period. Income summary has a credit balance of 165,000. The total revenues have been transferred to the credit side of the income summary account. Now let's close the expenses. Expense accounts have a debit balance. The account is closed by a credit to the expense account and the debit to income summary. A credit is made to each of the expense accounts for the balances with a debit to income summary for the total of 129,000. Let's look at the ledger accounts. After we credit the expense accounts, each expense account has a zero balance. Now the expense accounts are ready to begin recording expenses included during the next year. Income summary is debited for 129,000 and now has a credit balance of 36,000. This 36,000 represents the net income for the year. Next, net income must be transferred from income summary to retained earnings. Income summary has a credit balance of 36,000. To close this account, Income summary must be debited for 36,000 and the credit must be made to retain earnings for that amount. Let's look at the ledger account balances. Income summary now has a zero balance 
and net income appears on the credit side of retained earnings. Remember, credits to retained earnings increase the account balance. The final closing entry deals with dividends. The dividends account has a debit balance. To close this account, a credit is made to the dividends account and debit to retain earnings. Our final closing entry transfers the amount of dividends, 6,000, to the retained earnings account. Let's get back to our worksheet and record closing entries in the closing entries column. The total debit for retained earnings is 135,000, which is the total expenses of 129,000 plus 6,000 dividends. The credit is 165,000, which is the total revenue. After we post the closing entry, the dividends account has a zero balance. Retained earnings now has a credit balance of 70,000. This is the ending balance of retained earnings and is the amount that appears on the balance sheet. After preparing all the closing entries and after closing trial balance is prepared. The after closing trial balance shows we have no revenues, expenses or dividends. The proper balance of retained earnings appears on the after closing trial balance. If there are any revenues, expenses, or dividends on the after closing trial balance, an arrow has been made and the closing entries must be reviewed. Note that total debits must equal total credits. We are done with the worksheet. Let's review the after closing trial balance and compare it with the worksheet. The numbers in the after closing trial balance are the same as on the worksheet. Note that there are no revenue, expenses, or dividends on the after closing trial balance. The balance in the retained earnings account is 70,000. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Feel free to forward it to anyone who is interested in learning accounting. I will see you soon.